is a dead oak. And I walk into the woods looking for pockets of dead oaks, which I often identify from aerial photography. And then I inspect the sites. I see these oaks. The pattern of leaf loss is fairly distinctive for oak wilt, especially in an otherwise good growing year. Uh, there are some confounding possibilities, but in a good growing year they're uncommon. So usually when I see a pocket of dying oaks, especially if it has that classical concentric pattern to it, I'm pretty much sure it's oak wilt, but I like to confirm it with the presence of pressure pads. So I'll find a tree that died or appeared to have died the previous growing season, and then I look for cracks in the bark that hopefully underneath will have that pressure pad which pushes up that bark. And if indeed this spot here is a pressure pad with a spore mat underneath it, that is diagnostic for oak wilt. And at that point, I know that it's oak wilt in this stand. I'll assume all the dead oaks died from oak wilt. And then based on those dead trees and then the living trees, I'll look up into the regression tables and that's how I set the perimeter for the trencher to come in and isolate the epicenter underground. So these trees were symptomatic in 2016, so we're here in 2017 uh, looking for possible pressure pads. Um, so these trees, they do have some cracks on them that, that, are, that, are, that are possibly pressure pads, but if the cracks are not that noticeable, you can find them by um, drumming on the trunk and listening for the hollow sounds. So you start off with that tight sound to the bark, you hear that change. So here's a crack in here, so come on in a close and just zoom in on the crack. So you can see this crack, can you see it well from where your angle or come around on the side of it? So you can see that there's a crack here, there's another crack down here and here and again you can hear that hollow sound. There's another crack up here and again you can hear it. There, right there. You can hear that there. So then if you think you've got a crack, just open it up. I'll move back around. And those are some really old, not great looking, possibly just two line chestnut bar. Let's open these up. That's an older pressure pad, and so is that, but they're very frosty right now. Let's see if I can find a better one. Let's open this guy down here. So there's a good one. Pretty good one, but again, older. These dark spots here in the middle of the... This is frosted now, it's frozen. So we can see there was another crack in here between the two trees. So opening that up, you can actually see, come on in a little closer. You can actually see this raised area here, this dark area here, this raised sort of button. That is a very pretty good pressure pad. It's frozen right now and it's black, but uh, this would be diagnostic. That would be a confirmation for sure. So we have one more crack here on this side. So again, drumming. You can really hear the difference there. You can really hear. You can also, this crack is very pronounced, more so than the others. You can see that there. Go ahead, you can pop it open. And again, you can see this black area with some of the raised material here still in the center. So this again would be diagnostic. This would be a confirmation. You can see that sort of football shaped silhouette, the raised sort of material in the middle. So again, pressure bed. Okay, so uh, Mr. Cook just opened this up here and it, it very much smells like oak wilt. It smells like that 
fermenting apple cider juicy fruit bubble gum. And you can actually see some of the dark discoloration. So I'm gonna open up a little more. See if I can see any of that grayish white hyphal mass that sometimes you can find in trees that were died, died last year and have not yet produced pressure pads. And once again, Mr. Cook. Ah, the snoop test, positive. Well, it, it tells you you're on the right not track. not diagnostic, but, but it's, it's a good hint. It's a good hint. So it very, it, well, it smells very sweet, like fermenting apple cider, like juicy fruit bubble gum. And you can see here, as you try to pull this apart, there is this sort of grayish layer just under the bark. And you can see that black area here, and then the, the under the underneath wood, you know, and then you've got, uh, and again, the smell is just prolific right now. I can smell it a lot as I'm opening this up. Uh, I'm going to collect some samples from this because there have been times where I've collected samples exactly like this, where they have um, been brought into the lab, and before they could even be plated out, um, they produce pressure pads. So this, this gray, sometimes white hyphal mass under the bark um, can produce pressure pads. So I'm going to see if I can incubate some of these uh, sections of tree uh, in the lab. Uh, the smell that Oakwood produces in the bark smells like a lot of different things. Some people say juicy fruit gum, some people say um, other things. I like to think it smells a lot like a good vanilla ale. So this tree was marked as an SP, meaning a spore producer. So you come into a stand like this and you can see some of the mortality. So this tree right here is kind of old. It's going to have some older pressure pads on it, but again, listening. I mean, I can see that there's a crack here, but once again, open it up. And there's your pressure pad. That black silhouette with the white raised area in the middle. You can see that black silhouette, somewhat football shaped silhouette, and then the raised white spore, spore pad in the middle. So that's confirmed. That's Oakwell.